I would like to request Professor Dr. Nide Sapkota, Professor and Head of Department of Psychiatry, Patan Academy of Health Sciences, and Ms. Preksha Thapa, Senior Instructor at Department of Psychiatry Nursing, DP Koyala Institute of Health Sciences, Dharan, to deliver the presentation. The Chairperson of the Pre-Conference CME are Prof. Dr. S. V. Oja and Prof. Dr. Surinder Sirchan. I would like to request the Chairpersons to take the front seat. Thank you. So we are already some time delayed. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you all, uh, our guests from Norway, from India, from UK, our senior uh, psychiatric doctors, our colleagues, uh, psychology, social workers, resident doctors, all who have come here to attend this ninth national conference of psychiatric association of Nepal with the theme mental health in changing world. Uh, it's a very beautiful place and uh, located in the central part of Nepal as the uh, tourist hub of Nepal also. And uh, the theme chosen is very, uh, very much relevant to our context uh, because we have already, uh, just now we have come up uh, with the uh, effects of the COVID uh, uh, epidemic and uh, we have all witnessed that uh, there is the uh, exponential increase in the incidence of mental health problems in Nepal. And in this regard, what our, uh, we as a mental health professionals, what our challenges are, how we are going to face this problem, we have to uh, discuss, come to a conclusion, give some measures, uh, uh, show the way forward. And this time, um, it's important in the sense that uh, now the uh, annual conference of psychiatric association Nepal is being uh, taken at speed. Uh, earlier, uh, we used to have the such kind of conferences in uh, two, three years or more uh, gaps. But now, with the, uh, after just in just few years, it has uh, uh, the, in the you know, We are now going to hold the. We have been able to hold the Psychiatric Association Conference every year. This is the second time. So it's a good uh, positive indication uh, towards our development of our society's work also. So I want to thank uh, this, uh, the Organizing Committee, Psychiatric Association Nepal, uh, for organizing this uh, program. And we, are hope that we hope that this will be a successful program. So, without losing any time, uh, now I uh, request uh, Professor Dr. Nidis, he doesn't need any uh, uh, introduction, uh, he's a product of BPKISS, BPKISS, IHS, and he has so many more, more interest in the geriatric uh, field uh, psychiatry uh, and public health activities relating to the geriatric population. Uh, so, uh, it will be very helpful. Uh, the CME program uh, to present the uh, official conference is a very good tradition. We have to continue this uh, tradition because uh, for us mental health professionals, continued, uh, continual uh, education program is a very uh, pertinent, very uh, necessary requirement for us. The acquiring of the new knowledge, gaining the information is it should uh, continue for the end of our life. So, uh, CV program will be useful not only for the residents, I think. So, all the practitioners, all the professionals, uh, it will be very useful. And we'll, uh, without losing any time now, I will request Professor Nilis uh, to come up with his presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, this is the spread. Uh, thank you, organizing committee, for this wonderful session. In fact, I have seen in that schedule, pre-conference CME. I'm afraid this is not CME. We are going to present our finding, which we have done in Dharan, especially focusing on... Can you show my slide, please? My successive slides. But uh, may I request, please, to maintain silence, please. 
So there is an alliance of six countries. Of course, Nepal being the center one, because I am here. Or there are other countries from Southeast Asia, and one country, Iran and England. So this group is that the association of this country is called Disama. That is Northeast England, Southeast Asia Alliance Group. So the first consortium was held in 2018 at Kathmandu. The first conference of Nisama and second one was held in Dhaka. Third one because of COVID we could not conclude. And the one of the major objective of that alliance group is to focus on research, education, clinical service delivery within mental health. So there were three groups. One child psychiatry group, adult psychiatry, and elderly or genetic psychiatry. And I was placed in that elderly group as I was I had some interest in this genetic field. So then during our focus group discussion, they asked us what is the dire need of Nepalese population. Then I said, unless and until we do not have any figures, fact and figures. How can we communicate to our government? This is the burden of our society. So we should have some research. So everyone agreed, and we have we choose. Let us choose the common mental problems in elderly, focusing on depression, anxiety, dementia, and disability because these elderly population are quite vulnerable. So this is our research team from Nepal. I was PI of that project from Newcastle University, UK. Stella is was the PI of this project, and one of the objective of this association is, you know, to develop or to train early career researcher, to identify and to train early career researcher. So from Nepal, we identified. Prakshya Thapa, so we provided this forum to her later on. She will be presenting. She has learned about research and so she is one of them. And Amu is from India and there are other early career researchers of different countries. And our mentors, I think Professor Matthew, everyone knows Professor Matthew, he was uh, a, a, the professor and head of genetic psychiatry in Hans, recently retired, and Professor Richard from Newcastle University. They are our mentors. So we plan this project and try to execute. But why we have chosen this? You know, elderly cohort is exponentially increasing. The world is great. We all are getting, you know, healthy aging is so important. And the same scenario is depicted in Nepal. Like you can see, the life expectancy at birth in the police population is 72 years now. Female has better than male comparing. And if you see the national census of our country, we started taking the elderly population, demographic variables of elderly population for the first time in 1952, and this graph is exponentially increasing. And this was our back then 2011 census because the breakage of 2021 is yet to arrive. But this is 60 years and elder. But if you see the 65 years and elder, it is expected that by 2031, the 6.7% of the elderly population in Nepal would be more than 65 years of age. And this is the population who are more vulnerable to develop depression, to have depression, to have anxiety, and of course, dementia. And see, we have seen different systematic reviews. Some of the findings says that the prevalence of depression, anxiety, range the symptoms of depression and anxiety, especially in elderly population, ranges from 25 to 60 percent or more than that. And of course, dementia is ever increasing. So this was the rational. The other rational is mental health is quite neglected from the government side, from, a, from the research point of view. And very few research has been conducted in community, especially to the best of my knowledge, especially focusing on elderly population, gathering so much of population, sample size 
using a lot of variables, this is one of the first kind, I believe. So, and whatever the sample, whatever the study that we have in Nepal, we have done only in clinical setting or in poor days work. So this is the community study, especially this can be a pilot type of study gathering more than 1000 population. So this is the alliance group and it, it is a small scale funded project by British Council. So if we could succeed in conducting this research, then medium scale and larger scale would be possible in the days to come. So we had planned for this, making this general objective to see the prevalence of common mental illness, especially in elderly population like anxiety, depression, dementia, and our specific objectives were to find the prevalence of each diagnosis or each disorder. So of course it was cross-sectional quantitative study done in community setup. And these were the variables that we have selected. And most of the variables what we have selected is we have selected from national census data variables so that we can compare with our population as well. So these are the major variables. During the analysis which Rexia will be talking, these were the variables. In two by two table, we have used these variables for the analysis. Ranging from gender, date of birth, because of course 60 years and elder, the cutoff should be there, that is why this date of birth was so important, religion, ethnicity, marital status and lot of things. And study site, why we have chosen, because I was working at the time at Dharan, so one number 17 and 18 were proximity to Dharan BPKHS, so for convenience, because we had very small scale project, very limited fund. That was the reason we wanted to see that part of the world. And of course, the study population was 60 years and older, residing in that unit. And sample size, we have calculated by using the prevalence. We have, we have taken the prevalence of, by ADI report, though it has Every three seconds, one new person develops dementia in this world. So this 2015 prevalence may have risen, but we have taken this for our study. Later on, what we thought during our discussion, why not to go and have door-to-door -door survey, include all the population 60 years and elder, why to always confine with 360? And initially, we planned two stages. First stage, screen and second stage confirmatory screen positive. But because of COVID-19, that was not possible. So we have included all the population, all the population residing in ward number 17 and ward number 18 for our study, who are 60 years and elder. Of course, the criteria, we have said 60 years and elder residing in 17 and 18, 18 ward with informed consent for the participation. Individual with another impairment or disability preventing participation were included with carers report because the primary caretaker are so important in cases of especially like dementia and even the consent from the caretaker as well. And for the purpose of collecting data, because we believe that quality work is the reflection of good collection of data using proper tool. So these are five data collectors. All of them are MSc nursing students who have already passed MSc nursing students and working in different medical schools at post of instructor, senior instructor or lecturer. Those persons were trained by Professor Matthew. Uh, it was three days, two hours training and facilitated by us. And we got, of course, the ethical clearance from NHRC. And it was, the data were collected by door-to-door visit. Of course, it was COVID-19 second wave peak time. So we had to 
strictly follow these infection control measures and you can say some distance has been maintained by our data collector. And now I would like to give focus, some focus on these tools. Because we have senior psychiatrist here, we have, I think, the, uh, the learner here. So, why we have used this justification and some brief introduction about this tool. So, for depression, there was no any problem for us. We used geriatric depression scale, 15 item scale. It was validated by one of our colleagues, Professor Dr. Ajay and T from Dhuli Khelas, this Kathmandu University. So there was no problem using this tool. And we had convenient in using this tool. For anxiety, we used GAD7. Seven. seven item, obviously, and it was translated and back translated using standard protocol or measures, and we used cut-up score five or more for that. But for dementia, we had to struggle. We had several meetings with Professor Matthew and Professor Richard. Which tool? Because all these tools are not validated in Nepal. It has to be used in community. It has to be tested in different samples. So we had to struggle. Then we thought, why not to see from three angles, not only one. So we used this community screening instrument. Though it is 36 item scale, but we have used the brief one. So we have we have used this CSID brief. It, it has two components, just I can show you here. This is the this is the first one here. This one is administered to patient and this one is for the informant. So whatever the score obtained from the patient, that total score and this score gets minus from that total score of the patient. So we have used that one that is called brief CSID. There are items that test frontal lobe, that test temporal lobe, that test parental lobe if we use these two. So that is the reason why we have chosen that scale and that is also administered, that was also used by Dementia 1066 team, Professor Martin and team. So that was the reason. And it was, it was, the validation of that tool was seen elsewhere in developing countries, especially like our countries. And the items were tested in India, China, Brazil and other countries. Next tool for dementia we have used IQ code. That is a 16 item informing questionnaire on cognitive decline, focusing on cognitive. And we know cognitive problem is major issue in dementia. That is why we have used and we had to struggle to find out the cut of value for this population. So I think in Plexia's side, slide, she will be showing three cut of range as well. But for our analysis, we have used 3.85, which has been used in India and elsewhere. The other tool is everyday ability scale. This is easy. It is used in India. It was widely used in India. It's very good tool. This ability is mainly of cognitive ability rather than motor ability here. It focuses on motor and cognitive ability. So 12 item administratively informing higher, ind higher score indicates disability. And we know elderly populations are more vulnerable for disability and we wanted to see as I think you have come across in 2018 Lancet publication Hearing impairment is one of the most important predictors and the factors for risk factors for developing dementia. So we wanted to see in our population what is the scenario. So that is why we have these other tools that measures. But for disability, Barthel, I think this should not be problem using Barthel, Barthel tool. So we had problem is in using these three tools for dementia. That is why we wanted to see prevalence. In from three angles, what could the prevalence in this population? So this is the tool. Like just one question I would like to say. Like this patient-centered tool that is with a testing patient, what is the season, what day of the week? These are like these are the questions like MMSC. Here in informant question, you can see 
has there been gender decline in his or her mental ability so that focus is also given and this iq code basically this is used for alzheimer dementia we know after decades or two the manifestations of cognitive impairment clinically manifested only after decade or two that is why the question starts with compared with 10 years ago how is this person at present and there are 16 questions so it's a like or like you know scale much improved a bit improved not much change a bit worse much worse with some questions like remembering things about family friends example occupation birthday address so it tries to cater it tries to take a lot of variables and gds 15 we all are aware i'm not going to discuss so we have used the standard cut off point that is five and this is translated and validated in nepali language there was no problem and for this generalized anxiety disorder scale of gd7 also there was no much issue and everyday ability scale it is quite easy to use we can use this scale for screening purpose in our opd or in our clinical you know in this scenario whenever we are too busy and barthel of course we know this barthel scale so now i will uh, i will request uh, uh, prakshya to speak about the analysis and of course then we will talk we will be focusing on discussion the feedbacks and all may i request thank you sir respected dr sarvan prasad unja sir surendra sirchan sir chairperson of this session all the psychiatrists from nepal and abroad mental health professional and everyone present in this hall good evening and namaste everyone so now i would like to move forward with how we could assess how we could do door to door survey of about 1032 cases of elderly population so we can see here this is our study recruitment flow chart so in here the total population of taran what 17 and 18 is about 1243 cases so this is the official data we got from our award register so out of this we enrolled every elderly from our house to our survey and total cases that were enrolled by us was 1032 and for the final analysis as some cases were incomplete and there were some kind of missing data so for the final analysis we enrolled 1009 cases so now i would like to move forward with the demographic characteristics of elderly population here we could see we could see here the most of the respondent or most of the elderly population belong to 60 to 69 age group that is 52.1 percentage and the mean age of our population was 70.44 with a standard deviation of 7.68 likewise we can see the ward wise distribution in the ward wise distribution we can see the most of the respondent which were from ward 17 followed by ward 18 and in marital status most of the respondent were found to be married that is 63% and in gender wise distribution we could see 58% were female by gender similarly we can see the religion of the respondent most of them belong to hindu by religion uh, which is consistent to our national uh, census survey result and uh, by ethnicity you could see as dharan is a uh, ward of indigenous population so most of the respondent or most of the elderly population belong to uh, that is 60 percent belong to indigenous and we could see still there are the elderly population we are living together in a joint family that is most of the respondent 79 around 80 percent belong to joint family and here we could see the education status we could see some uh, surprising result like uh, we could although there are um, 55 around 
percent is illiterate, but we could see the data like there was comparatively the literate population is also higher. And among that, we could see most of the respondents are literate with no formal education. And we could relate this finding also. And in household composition, we could see most of the respondents are living with a spouse and other in the family. Likewise, in our present occupation, most of them were unemployed. And in past occupation, we could find most of them were homemaker followed by farming by occupation. So this is very important in our context as we are assessing dementia and all the common mental disorder and hearing and sense that is sensory impairment is very important finding in our study and we could relate the there is a relationship you know, as also Lancet studies have also mentioned the relationship of sensory impairment especially hearing impairment with dementia and similar result has been obtained in our finding also. So we can see here hearing impairment, we could uh, find 41.9% have some kind of or some degree of hearing impairment. It could be mild, moderate or severe and it has been reported by the uh, patient itself. And we could see but the PT thing is like only 1.6% of respondent or elderly people are using hearing aids. And uh, likewise a uh, visual impairment around 70% of elderly population is having some kind or some degree of visual impairment but the, you could see the good thing is that the use of glass is relatively higher in this population around 50 percent of population elderly population is using the glass likewise this is also very important finding like um, presence of physical illness around the majority of population or majority of elderly population is having some kind of physical illness like in hypertension we can see nearly 40 percent of elderly people have hypertension diabetes there is 20.7 likewise stroke and other other illness also and the use of medication if we see nearly 40 percent of respondent or elderly are using some form of medication on daily basis so now I would like to move forward with our major finding that is dementia and as Nilesar has already explained that we have assessed the dementia using two tools that is brief CSID and IQ code. Brief CSID we have administered to both informant as well as the case while as IQ code we have administered to only the informant. So let us see. Here we can see the prevalence. This is the frequency distribution of respondent by brief CSID, where 8.8 percent of cases were found to be screen positive. That is, uh, 86 cases out of 1009. So here we can see the prevalence of dementia by different social demographic characteristics of elderly. Where we could see this finding is very important and very interesting also and is consistent with the literature finding also. So we can see here 18 above cases. In 18 above cases the prevalence of dementia is very much high and statically significant with age also. And it's uh, we can see uh, by gender the prevalence is around 9.2 while there is no much difference in literacy status and in marital status we could see there is higher number of cases in married, I'm sorry, unmarried, widowed, separated or divorced cases. So now I'd like to move forward uh, with the bivariate logistic regression analysis of dementia by, by sorry, by brief CSID. Here we could see the odds ratio of, uh, odds ratio in age group of uh, uh, greater than 75 years it's nearly 2.82 times higher than those in in those people who are less than 75 age group. It means that we could see that it's highly statically significant. We can also uh, we have also seen in the earlier slide that in age group that is 18 above the prevalence of dementia is 20.2. That is the dementia is significantly increasing with the age and also uh, we can relate with our literature. Likewise, uh, in marital status, we could see the odds ratio of uh, 1.6 within the narrow confidence interval 
and in literacy, although it is not statically significant, but it is more in literate group. So this is also one of the most important finding of our study. That is, we could uh, see the uh, presence of physical illness to be statically significant with dementia. Uh, it's 0.03, and with hypertension and with stroke. Likewise, we, this is also uh, another important finding. As I have, as DSR has already uh, said, also, that sensory impairment is is uh, associated with dementia, and we could see here from our study result also in hearing impairment, it is statically significant with dementia, and also with visual impairment, and in those cases who are using some kind of mobility aids such as stick or wheelchair, it is found to be statically significant. We could see here the association of AIDS with dementia by Briggs CSID with the mean difference of 4.38 and it is highly statically significant. Now uh, I would like to move forward with the distribution of elderly population by IQ code. So earlier we have discussed about Briggs CSID. We have used another scale that is IQ code to measure the same construct that is dementia. So with this con with this scale or with this measure we found 11 nearly 11 percent that is 108 cases out of 1009 cases were found to be screen positive that we uh, that were the case of dementia. Here we could see the prevalence of dementia by different social demographic characteristics and it is uh, this finding is similar to the finding we have found from 3SID. So here we could see in age group it is uh, in 18 above is very much higher that is 16.2 percent and in female it is higher 11.8 percent and in educational status we could see it's more in illiterate group and likewise in marital status uh, we could find no difference in the prevalence between a married and unmarried or other uh, widowed other other group. So. Uh, now I would like to uh, talk about uh, association of selected demographic variables with dementia by IQ code. In IQ code, we have uh, found a statically different result in education that is illiterate by population, in homemaker by population, and although uh, although by IQ code we could not find a statical result in presence of physical illness and. Um, and uh, sensory impairment, but the cases were relatively higher in those who were having uh, sensory impairment and phys physical illness. So now uh, I would like to move forward with another measure we have used, that is geriatric depression scale (GDS-15), and uh, we could see the prevalence of uh, mild depression. 8.4% followed by nearly 4% of moderate depression in this age group and 1.7% of severe depression. So association of uh, selected demographic variable with GDS has revealed it is statically significant in higher age group and uh, with illiterate population and with marital status as divorced, widowed or unmarried. So likewise uh, we also measured anxiety by geriatric generalized anxiety disorder seven scale, and the total number of population that were that were finally analyzed were 791 cases. And some cases like those cases who are who, who are not um, um, willing to participate in the study or who are actively refusing or having a severe kind of uh, uh, sensory impairment like hearing impairment and who could not be able to participate. The um, study were excluded, and finally, we could analyze 791 cases. And for this anxiety, we, could, um, we used G87 scale, and we could see uh, the mild anxiety was present in 97 cases out of 971. Likewise, moderate anxiety was present in 17 cases, and followed by severe, which is very small, in per, that is 8 or nearly about uh, 1%. And we also assess the independent risk factor for anxiety and we could see although it is not statically significant with age group but it is high.
higher and higher age group and we that is a P of 0.07 and education more on the literate population and uh, bypassed occupation homemaker as a those population who were homemaker by occupation is found to have more anxiety and use of hearing aids was also statically significant. Now uh, as uh, Nidhisar has already told we have used another measure that is a, our uh, fifth measure that was easy everyday ability scale and we do not have a quarter for this scale. We only um, reported the prevalence of uh, prevalence using different score like a easy score, score of easy um, above 3, above 4 and above 5 and we could see that 13 percent of elderly people population or people uh, is having some kind of uh, impaired functional impairment and uh, we could see that nearly 8 percent above 4 and above 5 nearly 5 percent is having some kind of functional impairment as also is not only kinds of uh, cognitive impairment. So, moving forward, the last major that we assessed was Barthel Index and in Barthel Index we could see uh, the case of mild disability and case of moderate or severe disability. Nearly 20% of cases were found to be disabled and, uh, and nearly 5% of cases were found to be uh, having moderate or severe disability. So uh, this is the tentative result of our finding. We are moving forward with a bivariate and multivariate analysis of each of the measures like um, dementia, depression, and anxiety, and other measures also. So um, with this, I would like to uh, move forward with the limitation of our study. So as uh, Saur has also said, that the scale other than GTS 15 has not been validated um, in in our context, especially in our uh, context, so it was very much uh, uh, it, it was very much difficult to translate and culturally adapt and be used in our setting. So this was one, one of our limitation. And uh, next limitation was this study was conducted during the period of COVID-19. So it was obviously very difficult for the data collector because whenever we approach the uh, elderly people, they would say like, oh, you have come from BBKHS, oh, no, 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 no. So, oh, you are, you are doing a national mental, uh, sorry, national survey, okay, somebody has taken our data, okay, you can go. So, these were the cases that, that we should be uh, excluding in our final analysis also. So, we could not do the confirmatory assessment due to COVID-19 pandemic, so the, that's why reporting the uh, prevalence using screening tool only could overestimate or underestimate the prevalence of the different disorder. So that was our another limitation. And sociodemographic and other data was obtained by self-report, which which might limit the accuracy of the result. And also to study where participants were from urban or semi-urban city of the South Metropolitan City. And thus this might not be representative of the elderly population of other parts of Nepal. So this was also another limitation of our study. Though there are uh, many limitations, but the good thing is uh, this is one of the landmark study in the field of dementia and it is the largest the best study of dementia in Nepal. Likewise, as a comprehensive assessment, we have used many, uh, many measures to make, sorry, many scale to uh, measure the same construct like for dementia we have used Brixia's ID and IQ code and also easy. So, it is comprehensive and also um, we have done concurrent assessment of disability and anxiety and depression also. So it's more comprehensive. And uh, last and most important, uh, I would like to acknowledge here that we have uh, also, the Nidhisar has also acknowledged uh, that part, that we have used well-qualified data collector. Because in mental health setting, especially if we are not uh, if you are not trained or if you, are, if you do not know what, how to um, ask the question because this is very sensitive part and building of all the record and all is very much uh, difficult in short period of time. So, so
So we have used very trained, qualified and, and qualified data collectors. So the most probably we have gained more authentic data from this study. So now, in conclusion, I'd like to say the overall finding of the study. So the common mental disorder, especially dementia and other uh, mental disorder, is high among elderly population. And we could um, make a conclusion that physical illness such as hypertension, stroke, or diabetes may be a modifiable risk factor in this population. As well as sensory impairment such as visual impairment, hearing impairment may be another modifiable mix factor in this population. So with this, uh, thank you so much everyone for your patience with me. Thank you sir. Uh, thank you very much Professor Nides, Ms. Pratsha for bringing in such a Wonderful research finding. And this research finding, if I see this audience, we have audience, young research, young uh, residents, young psychiatrists. We have a uh, guest from uh, abroad, India, Norway, and other countries, I don't know. So I think this is really a uh, many take home messages, especially not only for the new uh, young uh, psychiatrist uh, residents you can see here how we can conduct research in Nepal and how we can also validate some tools as limiting some of the limitations some of the tools needs to be uh, validated in our culture and the professor Ajay is here who has done the very good job uh, validating the GDS tool. Thank you very much, Professor Ajay. Uh, I think for, for a new uh, psychiatrist, for us, we are gathered here in the team of mental health and changing world. And we are sharing our experience, knowledge, and I can see our senior psychiatrist here. So before my uh, conclusion or, or conclusion, may I request our participants to give their any comments, questions, or any kind of any feedback. Yeah. Professor Roman. Thank you for I just wanted to ask a small question. I when I see there, there are a lot of difference in the prevalence among literate and illiterate. I mean I was wondering why. I mean educating people prevents the risk of dementia. One. Two. There are questions which are being developed. Is it more directed to elicit very intelligent questions rather than questions not really appropriate for the elision? Otherwise, uh, the thing which you showed it, like the prevalence being much more higher in the window, single, uh, separate, not quite common, this is quite acronym, but then again, this literacy related separate group. The much, much more difference, the prevalence is very, very high. Uh, I know that you can thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir, for this lovely question. I think in standard literature, it talks about the literate people comparing illiterate one. They have low risk of developing dementia because they keep on reading, they keep on exercising their mind, so cognitive stimulation occurs. That is why in, you can see in our finding also, homemakers, they were more prone, they are getting the prevalent, the, the odds ratio was more in homemaker. Likewise, but these questions, if you see, brief CSIT, two person, but IQ code, rather it reflected more, and that was you with the informant, rather than patient. In fact, with the, when we asked with the informant by using IQ code 16, the, it was statistically significant with illiterate, which is shown elsewhere in literature. It has to do something with brain stimulation, cognitive therapy. That is why one of the important therapy for the, the dementia is cognitive stimulation therapy, like reminiscence therapy, or music therapy, all this brain stimulation therapy. That would be one of the reasons. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very, very good study. I was just wondering in one part, like, the data collection part must have been very hectic, like you said.
position, uh, you have to be well trained. So, if you want to do with so many tools, how much time did it take for each interview and what was the duration of the data collection? And another part is, uh, as you said, as I am a gynecologist, so what was the uh, reason for the difference in gender, male and female? Thank you. Thank you so much. Pressure we asked to the patient and for rib CSID there was two part, two, com uh, two section. One was with a uh, informant and one was with a case and another is anxiety. That is three of the majors we are going to ask to the patient and another three with the informant. So it took total at least one hour to complete all this session. So it was relatively long also and another uh, that you asked uh, like uh, we are going to use a trained um, pro uh, trained data collector. So before the conduction of actual study, as Nidhisar has also um, as a Nidhisar also told that uh, Professor Dr. Matthew, that who is a senior psychiatrist from NIMHANS, he conducted around three days of training to train the data collector to get a, to get actually what the, that specific measure is going to measure. So I think probably we should say that in terms of that they are qualified. So now. now second part, females, that are in world literature also. If you see the older literature, the prevalence of dementia, it outnumbers, female outnumbers, probably due to cognitive stimulation again. They are staying at home, cooking same thing, same routine, no brain activation more. But now in the, the recent literature, it is coming narrow and narrow. Hopefully in the days to come, when our son, our grandson does, does that study, who knows that male becomes more prone, because females are like, you know, they are working, they are in the running country, so their brain is building more. That could be one reason. But in world literature, that is one, and that is, these are the explanations, because the cognitively they are less stimulated, they are doing routine work, that could be the one reason. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank the team for the wonderful presentation and uh, I want to just add a few things that it's not a question actually uh, the question that Dr. Dharuman raised I want to add one uh, to quote one international study uh, yeah, there is a very recent study done by uh, Waterloo University in a huge number of people in a uh, Catholic uh, Catholic church uh, nuns where they studied this prevalence of dementia uh, in relation to the knowledge of uh, languages. So, it is, the finding is so astonishing that the ones who spoke or knew more than uh, three or four languages, three or four languages, and the, the, the uh, prevalence of dementia was much less, significantly less. So, if that is actually a very on a huge number of population. So, in that sense, I think uh, somehow literacy, education, and exposure to languages and uh, different different vocations, I think, has, has some meaning in prevention of dementia. That's just what I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, con congratulations, Dr. Nidhis and the team. We are very proud of you. Uh, my question is just similar to what Dr. Roman has raised. Uh, in our clinical practice, we often uh, notice that once the spouse expired, then suddenly the, the, the survivor has more cognitive problem and his or her dementia gets exposed. So when we carefully look at it, it seems that uh, the, the, the deficit had been very clearly and very beautifully marked by the spouse. That, that usually happens. Is there any chances that we are missing those subtle cognitive decline of the married or those people who already have a spouse? Is there any chance? Sir, so, uh, let me confess that it is in fact uh, the screen positive. We are not saying these people had dementia, depression, anxiety. Second stage would have been better confirmatory. Yes, but as you say, uh, there are now last uh, few weeks back I read one article. I was quite scared reading that article. That article says it is not the neurofibrillary neurofibrillary tangle that is responsible for dementia, something else. So there are a lot of theories now coming up. 
even with stress, diathesis model, acute, acute stress reaction, suddenly when brain tries to adopt, lot of cytokines, neurotransmitters get bombarded and the brain gets angry, tries to adopt and compromise in their cognitive decline. So, there are a lot of things and as you say, since this was just a screening, the bias could be that one as you say. It could happen, definitely. I think, thank you very much. I think we are running out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just have one or two comments. Mm -hmm. to talk about conclusions, if, if we maintain, from your study, it seems that even though you are getting good, please study. Can we take that? And then another is that, if you are single, please get married even though you are old. Can we get Yes, multiple languages speaking, multitasking, they are certain protective principle, uh, factors are there. That doesn't mean that they can totally protect. Yes, they do. Maybe we will take two more comments then because we are probably some of us are hungry. Maybe you give your introduction. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Pratibha Khanal, uh, assistant professor from Kathmandu Medical College and I specialize in psychiatric nursing from All India Institute of Medical Science, Delhi. My question to the uh, presenter is, while uh, you have, you presented the slide of sample size, it was around 300 something, if I am not mistaken. But during all your analysis, there is of 1,000 some, uh, thousand or 900 something. Why there is a discrepancy in uh, sample size when you have collected, when you have calculated uh, sample size? So can you please explain it? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I think in the uh, initial part of my presentation, I explained that when we use 2015 ADI report prevalence, we have obtained that standard formula, sample size came out to be 360. But our expert and mentor from Nimhans and UK, they said, why not to have go to do a survey and try to see all patients. And when we say, when we went to the ward and tried to collect the data, it came out to be 1200 plus. So that was feasible. Go to the survey. How many households? So that could be done. That is why. We did not want to, that is why it was enumerative sampling method. We did not want to miss anyone possible. That is why we tried to incorporate all the, and that is good, you know. In fact, uh, right, rather than using, when we cannot gather all this population, that is why we use calculated sample. Otherwise, if we can, this is better than that. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, we have uh, Professor Santosh Chaturvedi. It's a very extensive study. And, you know, coming from the last point, uh, 360 might be the lowest uh, sample size required. Anything more than that is more than merrier. Uh, so that, that's very good. And uh, it's very important to get data, so we have more data. I have just one suggestion, uh, which you, uh, your colleague already mentioned that your plan. See, the uh, uh, bivariate analysis is uh, very deceptive. So when you have the first one that it is more in age, higher age, then people who have higher age, they are more widow. People who are higher age have more hypertension. People, so everything might be because of a confounding variable of age. So hence, multivariate analysis is very important. And lastly, about the difference between men and women, I think it might also be because most women, almost all, must be postmenopausal. So there must be hormonal uh, uh, you know, changes which might be attributing to this. So some of the factors, well, I think it's very, very important findings that we have got. And uh, one can plan services according to that and you know, improve the quality of life. I am in the higher age group at a higher risk for dementia now. Yes. Thank you, sir. Please convey our uh, lovely regards to Professor Matthew. Uh, yes, I think she has mentioned since we had very short time, we could present this, but while writing paper, articles, that multivariate analysis would be done. That is our plan. Professor Matthew is not leaving us otherwise if you do not do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, I think, I think coming to the conclusion, sir, anything you'd like to say? So, to me, uh, we need in Nepal, uh, many, my colleagues ask me how many Nepalese people are suffering from anxiety, how many people are suffering depressions, something like that. So we need facts and figures. And we have the Ministry of Health, main person is here. Uh, so sir, uh, as our, according to our findings, 60 years and above, the prevalence of depression, prevalence of anxiety, prevalence of dementia and the quality of life is significantly, 
significant problem. So maybe sir, from your side, anything, uh, our health secretary, Dr. Russell Gopal is here. But uh, before concluding, uh, maybe some Dr. Professor Gopal, so this is the fact. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you, my seniors, my colleagues and my friends. It's a great opportunity for me to be here. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I had two or three work, so I took this opportunity to come and join the conference from tomorrow. But as because I, because I had not had dinner today, so I thought that why don't I join the pre-conference dinner and have dinner? Whatever thing, I go. Then he will come. My sorry, my sorry, Guru Lee, my dear, so they are now. Abhijit Ma, what we are thinking is. The government is really concerned about mental health, and I think in the last two or three years, uh, we've been trying to work on mental health issues, uh, especially the uh, non-communicable diseases and mental health. But as per Dr. Nima, Professor Dr. Madhavu Sahni was saying, Professor Nima's presentation was carefully done. And Dr. Pachas' presentation, I think yes, we are really worried about. Dementia and, and, and this cognitive decline after the age of 60 years, when I come back, I will know that I'm 50. Because my memory decline goes. See, why? I'm really sick. You know, this guy answers them. Why you dinner must not be done. Why you don't do that? I'm really forgetting things. Why? I'm not going to do that. 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 अंग्रेजी गाना के पात्र नहीं ना उसका तो ना दिस इज अ वेरी चैलेंजिंग इश्यू टू अ कंट्री लाइक नेपाल सो आई थिंक वी ट्राइंग टू वर्क ऑन इट सो विथ ऑल योर सपोर्ट्स एंड आई थिंक आई सी ऑल ऑफ यू आउट हियर आई एम नॉट अ सेक्रेटरी राइट नाउ आई एम जस्ट अ साइकियाट्रिस्ट वांटिंग टू लिसन टू व्हाट यू गाइस आर सेइंग एंड एज अ प्रैक्टिसिंग साइकियाट्रिस्ट I need to know the new things that are going on. So I take this opportunity to thank all of you, and the, definitely the government is very concerned with the mental health issues. And let's work together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Prasun Bhogre. We are fortunate that he is with us. I think. Uh, uh, so I think we are also hungry. Uh, it's, it's the time. I think we need to think about. Uh, so uh, I think very uh, thank you very much, Professor Nides, Miss Preksha, and for all of us, this is some facts which we can take to the policy paper. We can do some research for the new comers, and we can produce some positive mental health in our community. So with this, with the permission of Chair uh, Professor Suresh Sharma, I would like we can conclude the this session and maybe some announcement from the other side. Uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Dr. Nide Nide Sabgota Sir and Preksha Thapa Ma'am for your presentation. Uh, now we will have the felicitation ceremony. Therefore, I would like to request the band president, Dr. C. P. Sarai Sir, to felicitate Dr. Nide Sabgota Sir. Thank you, sir. Professor Dr. Surendra Sejan Sir. I would like to request Professor Dr. Vidya Dev Sharma Sir to felicitate Professor Dr. S. B. Oja Sir. We 
have come to the end of today's session. Thank you everyone for your gracious presence. I would like to request everyone to proceed for dinner. Uh, see you everyone tomorrow. Thank you.